my time for your pro quickie. I don't have anybody joining me today. So I'm just gonna chat about what to do if kids are talking about SEX at school, at childcare, um, not really in public, uh, maybe with other kids, but for you all, if the real concern is what if they're bringing it up and chatting about it when they're under your supervision? First of all, uh, if they're under well, pretty much, sorry, I'm not even gonna say if they're under. Uh, if they have this information and they hear a kid say, you know, um, sex is when you kiss with tongues or um, after you get married, you kiss and then you have a baby and they're, they hear kids say that and they know that they got the real deal, they may say, you know, that's actually not how this works and go into penis and vagina, et cetera, land. Um, so, as usual, it's better if everybody knows how things work from an early age, but we don't get our way. Uh, so be aware that that correction could happen at any age. Most of the time, kids who are well-informed, uh, their families say, hey, you know what, this is something that, um, that we talk about in our family. It's not your job to talk to other kids about it. Um, so, so most of the time, they don't actually provide information. So everybody's different. Everybody's wired differently. You know, so some kids are more chatty. Some kids are quieter about, this, about everything. So what you can do uh, is, first of all, uh, you need to have a script, right, uh, which you know. Oh, I love scripts. So if you overhear one kid correcting another kid or they're playing and there is a pregnancy happening and you um, overhear like, oh, yeah, the baby gets in there from the penis and the sperm and the egg. And you're you know, this is a this is the kind of play that people who are usually like six and under get into. Um, you overhear this. So a couple things need to happen. First of all, you need to give it a minute, right? Take a beat, right? We all take a big deep breath and then try to move them off that specific topic, right? So you can say, oh, when is the baby due? And, and re, you know, talk about it, um, just redirect them essentially, um, you know, with a kid that has all the information and they're playing that game, um, sometimes it's because they have all that information. So you're just gonna have to kind of um, go with the flow with that, maybe try some redirection. You know, I hate the word inappropriate, so we're not gonna say, oh, that's inappropriate to talk about. You can say, oh, that's private. Oh, that's a private thing, people having babies. Let's talk about what, what clothes are this, is the baby gonna wear? What's the gender, right? So we're gonna do a redirect. Um, the next thing, if that happens, then you need to tell all the parents involved that the cat is out of the bag um, for the one group um, and be really calm and clear. And, you know, you're going to have to talk about like lots of families are really open about this. Uh, you know, the good news is the kids were accurate. Uh, we'll be talking with that other child and family to remind them that, you know, to talk to their kid about keeping that information to themselves. And then you're just gonna need to wait it out. Uh, some folks will get really mad because they think their child's innocence has been ruined. So you're gonna wanna address that. Um, use the safety the safety piece, right? Kids who are well-informed, no correct names for private body parts. That is the number one that keeps them safer from, thing that keeps them safer from abuse. Um, so when you have that interaction with those parents who might be surprised for this with this information, um, you, of course, just need to stay pretty calm and wait it out. Uh, with the family, with the kiddo who is sharing the good news, uh, similar conversation, you know, hey, they talked about this today and just want to let you know that this is what we did. This is what we said. Um, what you said is something along the lines of, yeah, this is something that's private because it involves our private body parts. Um, so and ask them to just remind their kiddo that this is something that is um, you, the conversation, a conversation and things you talk about within, you know, within their family. So you've done that, okay? So that um, that scenario is, you know, pretty common. Um, you need to coach your staff to keep their poop in a group, as with all things related to private body parts, um, and not freak out if they overhear that. So, um, and you know, with your colleagues, you know, you can share this with them um, and what you're learning learning from me right now. Um, so that's the first thing with older kids. Now, this is a little bit different. So if you overhear a conversation and they're like, yeah, okay, what's oral sex? And they're like, it's this. And you overhear something like that. 
then um, you can step in and say, hey, this is not okay to talk about here. Um, you know, uh, it's really a private conversation. If you have questions, you should ask your parents and then redirect, 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 right? So you wanna say that. Um, and then depending on what they were talking about, you might, you know, if you have a seven year, eight, nine year old that is talking about oral sex, uh, you wanna keep your ears tuned up for slang, um, knowing about that, some families are really open, some families, some kids, you know, porn exposure. Uh, so with a child that is maybe initiating the conversation, if you can tell, um, probably have a, a private conversation and just say, hey, you know, I just wanna check in with you. Uh, you know, it sounds like, you know, where'd you hear about that, right? Cause you need to know if they're being porn exposed. Uh, if they say, oh, my mom told me all about it, then that's okay. Or I read it in a book, that's okay. Uh, because you wanna make sure that they are not basically getting their information from porn, which is unfortunately where lots of kids get their information. So just a little check in from that about that. Um, and then reminder that, um, sorry, I'm gonna sneeze, maybe. Not sneezing, okay, willpower. Look at me, I'm getting all red. Um, so, uh, or, and then another check-in would be uh, something along the lines of, hey, you know, it's not your job to fill other kids in about this part of life, it's their parents' job. So just gotta remind you that it's just not okay to talk about this kind of stuff here. And then you tell the parents and you um, gotta tell the parents of the other kid, right? Because you wanna have this open communication about what's happening. In, you know, under your care and then what you're doing to um, help kids remember that that's not an appropriate topic. Okay, so that's how to manage the kids. With older kids, you can just be like, excuse me, not here, not now. You know, this isn't okay to talk about, you know, y'all can get in trouble because people are crazy about this. So yeah, parents, not here, peers, not here. And just really like, bye-bye, no talkie. So that's, uh, that's like middle schoolers and older where you can just be like, excuse me. Um, again, highly like turn up the radar about does this conversation sound porny? Is it really adulty? Like what they're talking about? And then you need to have a different kind of conversation with them. Um, with older kids, um, you can tell the parents, I would document it, um, but because this is just developmentally appropriate for them to be talking about this, I would say that you probably just want to keep an eye on those kiddos, and if they keep talking about it, then you're going to need to tell the, you're going to need to tell whoever the adults in charge of them are. Okay, there was another thing that just came in my head and then just left. Hang on, I'm going to pause us because I can't remember what it is.